Hi everyone. In this video, I am going to discuss about the power transmission in rectangular waveguide. So, what is the total amount of power transmitted PTR in the rectangular waveguide? Whether it is an electric field or magnetic field, what is the total amount of power that is going to be transmitted? The power transmitted through a waveguide in a rectangular waveguide walls can be calculated by means of pointing theorem, complex pointing theorem. We will write here the power transmitted through a waveguide in the guide walls can be calculated by means of complex pointing theorem complex pointing theorem okay generally the waveguide is terminated with a short plate or any type of uh, match termination what do you mean by that termination the entire power that is going to be terminated at that point that means there is no reflection back towards the source okay entire power is going to be terminated that means no side uh, no uh, in, uh, there is no any standing view okay the power transmitted the power transmitted PTR indicated by PTR through a waveguide is given by through a waveguide is given by PTR is equal to closed integral P into ds okay this is the closed surface integral what is the amount of power that is transmitted along the walls according to the pointing theorem we are writing this equation so along the walls if you are taking a rectangular waveguide there are four walls two walls horizontally and two walls vertically bottom and top again two side walls so what is the amount of power that is transmitting through the walls we are calculating so what is the amount of total uh, integration of power that is transmitted along the wall nothing but along the surface that's why it is closed integral the power transmitted through the wall on the surface that is equal to integral e cross h into ds so the power p can be written as e cross h that means it consists of both electric field and as well as magnetic field okay so we know that we know that wave impedance Wave impedance already we have discussed this topic in the previous video. Wave impedance indicated by ZZ. Wave impedance for TE mode it is ZTE. For TM mode it is ZTM. In general we call it as ZZ. That is given as electric field by magnetic field. Electric field in one direction divided by magnetic field in another direction. Okay, EX by HX. So in general in general we can write it as in general z is equal to e by h okay if you don't write anything which direction it is going to be considered normally impedance z is equal to e by h so you can write e is equal to h into z or you can write h is equal to e by z Take this equation, first equation and substitute what is E in that. So from equation 1, PTR is equal to, PTR is equal to integral, uh, sorry it is uh, of 1 by 2, 1 by 2 closed integral E cross H ds. 
e cross h ds now it is 1 by 2 integral what happens now if you substitute this here uh, e cross h e into h actually it is ds substitute e and hz into h ds or you can write it also ptr is equal to 1 by 2 integral e into e by z into ds okay so it is 1 by 2 z integral mod e square ds it is 1 by z by 2 integral mod h square ds this is ptr in this electric field terminology and this is ptr in this magnetic field terminology okay we have done nothing just we have taken uh, what is the wave impedance from that wave impedance definition we know that z is equal to electric field ratio of electric field to the magnetic field electric field in one transverse direction divided by magnetic field in another transverse direction just in simple we can write it as e by z so if you take e is equal to z that leads to this equation and if you take h is equal to e z that leads to this equation but we know already uh, we know that the mod e square is equal to it consists of both the components ex and as well as ey so we can write it as ex square and ey square and similarly mod h square can also be written as mod hx square plus mod hy square that means the magnetic the electric field component when you are saying e square it consists of both the x axis electric field and as well as y axis electric field and similarly with hks also okay now for tm mn mode the average power the average power transmitted through a rectangular waveguide through a rectangular waveguide of dimensions dimensions are nothing but what is the breadth what is the breadth and width of this rectangular waveguide dimensions a yes breadth and b as width is ptr is equal to now the integration just here we have not specified the integration in which direction it is x axis or y axis we have taken the integration it is combined but here when you are taking this mod h square it is having both hx square plus hy square here also if you take only e square it is having mod e square plus mod e y square e x square and e y square that means x axis component is there and y axis component is also there here also x axis component is there in magnetic field and y axis component is also there but when you are taking the integration up to which limit you need to do the integration in x axis and up to which limit what is the limitation in y axis that means x axis if you take the rectangular wave it is having the dimension like this okay the same diagram i have been drawing sorry this is x okay 0 a and this is b so if you take this surface bottom surface and top surface what is the limit a that means breadth if you take in the upper direction y axis what is the limit b so the limits are 0 to a for x axis and 0, 0 to b for y axis so you can write it as 1 by 2z 2z nothing but i am taking this one why i am taking this one because i am discussing now e 
Tm. Tm wave. For Tm wave, magnetic field is zero. Electric field component is existed. That's why 1 by 2z integral. What is that? Mod E square ds. Okay, this is for Tm. If it is Te, then we need to consider other the other equation. Z by 2 integral mod h square ds. Okay. So, 1 by 2z, this integration now has to be split into two parts, 0 to b and 0 to a, that is mod ex square plus mod ey square ds, sorry dx in x axis and dy in y axis. Hope you understand, this x axis is the limit from 0 to a and y axis has having the limit. 0 to b. So, similarly, Ptr is equal to z by 2 integral 0 to b integral 0 to a mod hx square plus mod hy square dx dy for which wave? For Te wave. Te mn wave. Okay, and we know Z Te is equal to what is Z Te? Eta square root of 1 minus Fc by F whole square. Okay, otherwise you can write you can also write it as a lambda not by lambda C whole square, both are same. Therefore, Ptr is equal to Ptr for which wave? Te wave. Ptr for Te wave is equal to sorry it is uh, Te This is for Tm wave, Tm. I will write here. This is for Tm. This is for Tm. Then Ptr for Tm wave that is given as 1 by, it is 2z. So 2 eta square root of 1 minus Fc by F whole square integral 0 to b integral 0 to a ex square plus ey square dx dy and similarly for t wave jte is equal to what is jte eta by it is eta by square root of 1 minus fc by f whole square. When you substitute this in that equation Te, what is that equation? Go back. What is this equation for Te? This one. Z by 2. Integral this one. Okay. Z by 2. Z by 2 is nothing but this is Z. Eta by 2 into square root of 1 minus fc by f whole square into integral 0 to a 0 to b integral 0 to a hx mod square plus hy mod square dx dy this is for t wave this is the total amount of power that is being transmitted when you consider the t e wave and tm waves thank you